Hello everyone, this is day six of Miss Quid's trying out a Raspberry Pi 4 as a desktop replacement. So we've been using Ubuntu Mate now, this is the second day of you trying it, so what do you think about it now? Uh, well my opinion has definitely changed on it now. Um, I came across some kind of different issues as well as not being able to resolve some issues I already had, for example mm. DRM, uh, that's still not fixed as we'll see. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there are some positives and negatives to it, but yeah, a bit of a different experience today. <laughs> mm. So I thought we'd try a couple of things that we hadn't tried yet, and that was playing some more video files, but this time off the NAS. So we're using the NFS, Network File Share, and trying to play a 4K video. Because there wouldn't be quite enough room on the uh, memory card, these four K movies, 20, 30 gig in size. So I tried to play it through VLC, Ubuntu Mate. Uh, didn't play, did it? No, no. So I tried, as you can see, that we're, I was looking at um, a movies folder. Uh, the more recent films are going to be what you'd, yeah, where you'd find 4K. That didn't work. And so, as you can mm. see, I ended up going towards older films. Uh, yeah that have uh, lower, say, 1080. So those did work, although not perfectly. <laughs> mm. 1080 was a bit, uh, well, dropped quite a few frames. Mm. 720 was a lot better. Mm -hmm. It's a difficult one to really criticise against this because this is not going to be the main use case. It's not really the, the sort of purpose for Ubuntu Mate. If we wanted to watch movies, we'd be looking at Libra Elec. So more dedicated to playing movies, but you know, we thought we'd try it. And it gave us a chance to try the uh, you know, NFS, which, which did seem to work all right, although we just got permissions on usernames because it's all set up under my account, not Miss Quid's account. <laughs> Fun with uh, permissions in Linux. But as a feature we didn't show was the heads up display, the HUD. So that, um, I think that sort of worked quite well when I used the uh, the x86 version did the full review of uh, Ubuntu Mate 2004 but uh, in fact, I don't think you would have even known it was there no. if I hadn't told you <laughs> if I hadn't enabled it and hadn't told you how to uh, use it which is just press the alt key mm. uh, but it doesn't work everywhere it only works in programs where there are a menu at the top mm. sounds kind of obvious but um, things like Firefox where there is a menu but not at the top of the screen mm. And it didn't work for a Snap application, Inkscape. Now, I thought when I tried Inkscape before, it looked a lot better than this. So yeah, that was another thing we wanted to try was Snap's applications. And I know a lot of people don't really like them, but you know, these are an alternate package manager to get newer applications than that were previously on the system. So that Inkscape, um, that one installed okay for you, didn't it? Yeah. That was no problem. Yeah. It installed it open find from the menu. Yeah, but not the case for everything. So I suggested you install GIMP, but that did not work, did it? No. No, I tried to open it from the menu and also from the command line, neither worked. Um, so yeah, I came across some interesting errors there. So it does show a path error there. Now that, again, is probably part of how we've installed the system, that it's not an official release yet. This is built off Ubuntu server. So yeah, I'll forgive them for that one. That's, that is an error, but due to the fact of how we have had to install it at this point in time. But yeah, even with um, the path put in there, it, it didn't work. So shared library errors. And, and that wasn't the only one. We tried Super Tux Cart as well because we wanted to try a game. And yeah, that did not work. Uh, yeah, in fact, we tried to run the Super Tux cart from the dev package. You, you weren't aware it was not working right initially. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I hadn't, I hadn't actually played it before. I don't think, and so I thought, oh, this music's a bit weird, a bit bouncy. And you said, well, it's actually just really slow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was, um, well, it was almost unplayable. You, you tried it, but it I was... tried it. It was playable, but not very entertaining at its current performance. <laughs> no, no, I mean, we couldn't even capture it. I, mean, I could mm. I'll probably just show you a bit of the game here, but um, yeah, this is not the uh, the capture off the Raspberry Pi. It, it was slow enough just to play it, let alone trying to add in um, mm. 
desktop recording, which really does weigh the systems down. I did notice that Ubuntu Mate was making more use of caching, making more use of the memory on the system. And I know we've got a screenshot here where it's come back down to about 900 meg, but you had quite a few applications open at once and there was no real issues with it. No. A lot of applications open. The initial opening, a lot of times, is a bit slow, isn't it? But mm. once an application was open, it it made use of the memory. The eight gig of RAM on the Pi it was used, and yeah, you know, the applications were responsive enough mm-hmm. once they were open. As long as you were only actively using like one at a time, that's how I'm sort of thinking of it. The multitasking, you can multitask, but Trying to run a couple of applications of heavy loads at once was a bit beyond it, really. Mm. And that's what I will sort of point out. You know, I think no matter how good these Raspberry Pis are, there are limitations. Once you change the sound settings through the terminal, they've remained the same throughout. Mm. You've not had to go back into the terminal to do anything further. It's a shame it wasn't point and click yeah. like Manjaro, but... But when I started up the Pi today, having not used it since yesterday, I didn't have to change anything. The audio just worked. So Mm. that's something. At least the settings were persistent. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to get a bit of pain off why I have to put in a terminal command Mm. to make it persistent or do whatever. But yeah, it turns out, okay, it was a terminal command needed, but not that bad. I had to get you doing quite a lot on terminal lately. (laughs) Bit of a shock, this. I was trying to say Linux should be all about the... uh, the GUI, though, like, or modern Linux should be all about the GUI. But mm. I gave you a page full of instructions today. <laughs> well, at least I'm somewhat familiar with the terminal, though. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I did used to use, um, I did used to have a separate, at work, a separate uh, desktop computer with Linux that I used to SSH into to get some work done. So it's not like I'm completely unfamiliar with this, but mm. yeah. Because one thing that was tripping you up was the file manager. Ah, oh, yes, yeah. So I could not, for the life of me, remember the name of the file manager. Um, so logically, I'd think, okay, I'm going to search for the word file, mm. uh, which does give you an option at the top called file management. And this has the same icon as the actual file manager at the bottom of the list. Um, so if you actually enter file management, it's actually the option screen. So mm. it's it's really not what you want. You'd have to actually look through the list and think, ah, it's actually Kaha. Yeah. Uh, the, the one yeah. in a place at the bottom mm. is the file manager yeah. with a search of file in the brisk menu, that is. Yeah. So mm. Actually, I think that's the brisk menu. Whatever, the, the menu there was the, uh, the default default desktop layout mm-hmm. <laughs> so, something to take away Ubuntu Mate developers if I type file in the uh, menu there I want the file manager Yeah. <laughs> not an option about it not Vim not log managers <laughs> no <laughs> file manager oh for a laugh we did try uh, explorer Windows Explorer. I uh, tried typing Explorer and nothing, so no. that wasn't to help you. Oh, no, no, it brought up Firefox. Oh, yeah, it did bring up Firefox, yeah. It brought up an Explorer of some kind, but not the one, not the one I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> so I think from Ubuntu Mate, you have seen it. It's a very flexible system. You've got different options there on which desktop layout you would like. I know you kept with a traditional one. You definitely didn't like the Apple one, uh, uh, your reaction. <laughs> I know, I do know. When I was deciding them and uh, before before recording the video, I had looked through all of them, I think yesterday in turn, and I just saw Cupertino and I was just, and I just went, oh, I don't want this. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't have such great associations with Apple. <laughs> So final thoughts for Ubuntu Mate, what do you think? Yeah, so kind of organising it into positives and negatives. The positives are that um, in terms of performance, it's a lot better than the alternatives we've looked at so far, definitely. Hmm. And it fits the bill in terms of the general use case that I was looking for in terms of being able to watch YouTube videos of decent quality 
and in order to do some just general web browsing. Um, negatives, I mean, there was the minor thing with the audio, but at least that persisted. So, you know, that's OK. Um, but the main issues are obviously the DRM, as we keep on talking about, um, and also just the minor things about expectations in terms of the user interface and those not quite happening. Um, so that was the file manager thing. Um, on the whole, I say pretty positive, but just there's some minor things that, you know, with a less technical user that they might struggle a bit more having to go back to the terminal to fix lots of different things or having these issues come up and some weird errors and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, for the more technically minded user, they'd probably be okay with this, but for someone coming from straight from Windows with like having little to no Linux experience, it would be a lot harder. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think you would find it easier on the, the full x86 system mm. you wouldn't have to be dipping in and out of the terminal like this this is fixing issues that are specific mm. to the arm architecture and the pi yeah and of course the the whole thing is is everything it all comes with the caveat that we're using this on the pi so we're yeah. it's it's limiting somewhat hmm. yeah yeah some of these aren't necessarily criticisms that have been too much but it's just how it works on yeah. this architecture hmm. so as i've said earlier in the series there is limited choice on the number of distros available for the Pi 4. Now this is at time of recording, this is at time of when we're doing this. And the Pi 4 has been out a little while but not long enough that there are a wide selection operating systems built for it, built specifically for the Pi 4. There's lots for the Pi 2, 3, etc. But um, yeah, Pi 4 is very limiting. We just tried Void Linux here, but yeah, there's no option available for it. So we're gonna have to miss this one. We can't do Fedora. I think for the final day, we're going to try another Ubuntu 20.04, but I'm going to try a different desktop. So we'll see how that goes. Mm. What I hope is that as the time goes by, the choice will increase, but also the hardware acceleration and, well, actually the wider acceleration of the operating system. So it will look more usable than we're able to demonstrate in these videos. Final day tomorrow. So thanks for watching. And we'll see you all later. Bye.